Hey guys, this is Jeremy from Church Mag. I'm in a cave, and we got another Minecraft theology for you guys. So I'm going to tell you I'm in the nether, and there's a reason. We're doing a little operation. We got a little bit of nether brick going there. We have a whole mine carts track going on. But I'm here just to do a little bit of digging, and I'll tell you what's going on with this, and then I have a discussion I want to share with you guys. So we are clearing out 128 blocks wide, 128 blocks tall, and 128 blocks deep. Why, you might ask, am I doing something so crazy? It's because I'm a glutton for punishment and because I want to do a gold farm. We tried to do something on top and it's just too much of a hassle to try to do it on the nether ceiling. Uh, we're not even sure if the it's still working up there. We can get up there, but it's nothing was spawning up there at all. And instead of trying to figure out all the places and then mess with it, instead I figure well, let's just make let's just go crazy and just mine all of this out. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe th this isn't the best option, but that's okay. So we're going to be clearing out all of this brick, all the ore and stuff like that, and then we're actually going to have just a small platform where we do our gold farm and that'll be in a future episode I'm not sure exactly how we'll do it but when we get there we get there I don't expect to be there for a month um, a lot of the guys on the server are going to be doing that I think yeah Wesley is still on um, so we will just see how long it takes but once we get there we get there and it'll be great um, so the topic I want to talk to you guys today while I do this and I won't do this the whole time I got three picks I gotta get through and then I'll be done for today um, but the thing I want to talk to you guys about was um, I'm doing a whole series uh, for my work. I'm a clinician and I do a lot of work talking about how mental health services impact Christianity, impact spirituality in general, um, because a lot of our clients aren't necessarily Christian. And how does how does counseling, how does mental health impact those things? And it, that general topic isn't necessarily appropriate for what what this entire series would be but for me the the kicker of all of this is i think that ministry struggles a lot with depression and i used to be a youth pastor and so i know what it's like to struggle with the idea of having expectations that you get so many kids to your events and that means trying to accomplish something that really is outside of your control and then trying to accomplish the fact that you need to make sure that you are providing adequate services for those kids and then meeting the different needs and making sure you're meeting new people and the introvert in me alone hates the idea of meeting new people and so there's just a whole lot of stuff that goes into it and I remember myself finding myself whenever I was meeting one-on-one -on -one with a teenager or parents really enjoying those times and that's really why I got into counseling I think that that's what sparked me wanting to do something like that but for me the, the standing in front of an entire audience of trying to go meet the new principal at the school, of trying to get to know the next class that's coming in, the next middle school and freshman class, that was tough. And I don't mean tough in the sense like, oh, I'm going to have to kind of put some work in it. I mean, I would actually lose sleep because of something like that. And I remember finding myself comparing myself to other ministries, and you're not supposed to do that, I get that, and yet I did. And for me, there was a huge problem with, with depression in this process. But that wasn't the first time I experienced depression. I actually had struggled with depression for many different years of my life. Uh, whether it was getting picked on at school and recognizing that I was not the social butterfly that everybody else was, and getting picked on and being alienated from my peers. That was hugely difficult to trying to figure out what God wanted in my life and ending a seven-year relationship so there was a lot of different things that kind of impacted me and in fact I would say I actually suffered from uh, a mild anxiety disorder whenever I was going through college and it, that one was kind of weird because I normally handle stress fairly well but whenever that happened I've had big shifts in my life I've gone to a completely different state 2,000 miles away as a missionary raising my own support to be able to do youth ministry for a ministry that I had I know the core of it, but I've never done military ministry for teenagers. 
And that wasn't as hard as getting through my graduate schooling knowing that ultimately the rest of my career had to support my kids. And that was difficult. And so talking about this idea of depression and how does that fit in with counseling, there was been this huge discussion of what does that mean? And I think that a lot of senior pastors don't understand what mental health is, at least from the general conversations that I've had with people of I've even had conversations with some blogging friends of, oh, you, you're feeling depressed right now. Don't you have Jesus in your life? You should probably get over that because you have Jesus in your heart and he can conquer all things. And so you shouldn't feel depressed right now. And I have a problem with that because there's two different versions of what feeling depressed is. There's ha knowing that you have hope in Christ and then there is feeling so overwhelmed by things in your life and ultimately things that you shouldn't feel like you have to have control in and there's thinking errors and there's probably even sin there and to just simply dismiss the idea the fallacy that oh you should just be okay because you have Jesus in your heart for me is a huge problem and I struggle with pastors and elders and other people that have that rationale of just kind of deal with it get over it kind of deal with what you got and move on and it's kind of funny that I'm doing this in this biome because this is if you jump, it shows that it's the hell biome. Where's that at? Oh, the biome is right there, the fourth line on the left. And it feels a lot like hell whenever you feel like you're doing it alone and a senior pastor says, oh, just kind of get over it. Or the elder comes up to you afterwards and says, you know, that was a really good talk. I'm glad you kind of gave that illustration, but you really should just try to take it to God in prayer and just kind of get over it. And that's such a difficult thing to do because, you know what, I wish I could. I tried that. I've been trying to figure things out and I feel stuck. Help me. Someone, please help me. And there's just this simple cry of trying to figure things out. And it happens to, to pastors all the time. And I think it happens a lot in church technology as well. We're a very introverted kind of group. I know that there are extroverts within church technology, but that is more of the exception than the rule. I know that I call you guys my people because we're all socially awkward. Whoa, no, 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 no. <sighs> what was that about depression? Ah, awful. Well, you'll get to see Spawn here. That was awful. All right. All I lost was Netherrack. That's okay. So for me, the big discussion in all of this comes to the point of how should we approach this? And I know that there's a lot of people that are socially awkward. They got picked on just like me in school. That it seems to be kind of the place. Church technology is where you go when you can't work with the nursery, can't socially interact with people as far as volunteering for youth ministry. You can't be in the worship team up front because you either don't have the talent or you have stage fright. And so you go to church technology. And that's a terrible generalization it's a terrible expectation of that but it, in some ways it's true and i call you guys my people because i am one of you and we get to sit in the back uh, we get to not communicate with other people and we struggle with the idea of we're serving the church but does anybody actually care and so i always wonder what does this mean for us as a church and so i want to challenge you guys to start a dialogue with me about depression i've shared with you guys i've struggled with that in the past um, it's definitely something that i have gotten through i have worked through some of my own personal issues. This is our nether hub, by the way. We got treks that go around. Here's Sean's that goes that way up north. And I think we have, this one is uh, Stephen Holt, Wesley, who's on right now. So we could actually go visit him if need be. And then we have the one that goes to the desert. We have one that's going east of the desert, which will go out, and that's where the gold farm is gonna be. So I've talked to you guys about what my anxiety and depression has looked like in the past. Um, so I'd like to hear what you guys have to say on this topic as well. I don't even know where I'm going. I don't think I'm going to find anything. And, and I would really like to start kind of taking away the sting of what that is. Because I don't think it's true. I think that our ministry could be one of the best relational ministries out there. Especially with social media and blogging and just being able to talk to people about, about pornography and... There's just so much there that really the church could be serving well if we as a church tech ministry would step up and own. And so I would love to hear what you guys have to say on this topic. You guys are actually going to get a test case with me. I put some more quartz over here, so we'll see if it works. So what has your experience been as far as anxiety and depression? Um, what is it that you've seen that has worked or has not worked for you? 
And then what what is the, what do you hope the goal is as far as anxiety and depression? Do you feel like that there should be a goal for us to be able to try to achieve? Um, is it something that we should say, okay, we're going to stamp out pornography. We're going to get rid of uh, the stigma that church technology is all about the introverts in the back of the room. I don't know. I don't really have a specific aspect or expectation with this. Um, so we'll see. But leave you guys' comments below. I'd love to hear what you have to say. Oh, my stuff's all gone. Darn you. That's okay. I've, di I've lost about six diamond pickaxes here because I initially tried to come over here. Where is it at? I'm trying to do this 128 by 128. And I was going to carve out the whole thing. And I got that line carved out. And in that line, I had lost about six diamond pickaxes. So I'm like, eh, I'm just going to scrape the top off of everything and then come back and do what I need to. So if I lose stuff, I lose stuff. That's okay. So leave you guys' comments below. What's been your experience as far as anxiety, depression? What's been your experience as far as senior pastors that may not have cared or uh, senior pastors that have been extremely helpful for you? Um, I'd love to hear some of those success stories. I don't have those myself. But that might just be my own experience, and that's okay. Um, and then also, where do we go? What could Church Mag do as far as starting that conversation? I know we're going to be doing a devotional in Nehemiah, and this is going to be one of the things that we talk about in that is how to struggle with the anxiety of not fitting in, of having a mission called by God to do something great, but not necessarily owning that well. Um, so we'll see where this dialogue goes. I don't expect this... To, to be the last a first in a long series of conversations so i look forward to hear what you guys have to say and we'll talk to you guys soon